was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Eric and in today's video we're going to be doing some shifting upgrades for the 300ZX. Now if you guys remember from the last video uh, when I posted on the 300ZX I did mention that there was an issue with the shifting. It's extremely hard to get into gear. Um, this only happened after I dropped the transmission. So I think maybe I broke a bushing in the shifter or something I installed incorrectly. So in today's video, instead of going back there and replacing the stock stuff uh, with stock stuff, um, I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade the shifter bracket and the bushing on the shifter to see if that fixes the issue that I'm having. Now, the first thing that I tried to do to solve the issue that I was having with the shifter was to try to bleed out the clutch. Um, so I did uh, do that for a few times and it didn't really work. Uh, so the next thing that I decided to do was to delete this pipe here. This is um, the engine bay bleeder for the clutch. Um, so I deleted that because the idea behind deleting that pipe is you're going to have less fluid that needs to be compressed if you delete that pipe. And in that sense, the pedal should feel firmer and maybe that's why the clutch kind of feels funny maybe it's not fully disengaging so i i did that to try to see if that would fix the issue now if you guys want to see the video uh showing you guys how to remove this engine bay bleeder go ahead and click the video link above so that you guys can watch the full video um it did uh, make a huge difference uh with the way the clutch pedal felt so make sure you guys also check that video out so what i have in front of me here is uh the shift mount bracket this is uh, from Concept Z, and this bracket is called the uh, Z Performance Mount Bracket. I'll go ahead and leave it linked in the description of the video so that you guys can check it out. Uh, but overall, this has a very solid construction to it. Um, this will replace your stock bracket that has a bushing in the middle. That sometimes that bushing uh, does break. Once, once that happens, you basically have to buy the whole bracket. So this is kind of like a future-proof thing that you want to do here. Um, it also comes with this plate um, to seal up the transmission, uh, kind of like the tunnel where the shifter is. Um, and it comes with hardware and a new boot. Um, I also did uh, buy some new bushings for the shifter right here. Uh, so these are brass bushings. Um, camera's wandering here, but these are uh, brass bushings that um, should be better than what it currently has right now. So I did jump ahead a little bit to remove uh, some parts from the center console here. Uh, so I did remove the radio bezel. There's a few uh, Phillips screwdriver uh, bits that you need to remove along with some fasteners. But once you get that stuff out of the way, uh, you'll have access to your shifter um, boot here and your shifter. So unscrew your shifter right here by, you know, unscrewing it. <laughs> and then uh, once you get this guy out, you should be able to remove your boot and then uh, have a closer look at what we're dealing with here. So this right here is the stock uh, shifter uh, on the vehicle. We have a short throw shifter here. And uh, as you guys can see right here, we have a bushing here. Now this bushing is still in okay shape, but uh, you guys can kind of see that it's starting to crack here a little bit. This over time can break. And if this does break, your shifter will go down and you won't really be able to shift. So this is a potential uh, safety issue here. Uh, so I'm gonna just delete this whole system and install that solid bracket so that we don't have to worry about that. But in order for me to remove that bracket, I have to jack up the vehicle. Uh, but you guys uh, can see that it's fairly simple to get to these fasteners. I believe these are four 12 millimeters um, that you need to remove. And this upper bracket here will come out. So with all those fasteners removed, this guy will just kind of pop right off and uh, come out from the top here. You just kind of got to wiggle it out. So 
So with that bracket out of the way, you guys can see that the shifter kind of moves up and down. Now, what you want to pay attention to here is uh, these two fasteners. There is uh, one right here. Um, there is actually a nut on this side and a fastener on this side. Uh, you want to go ahead and remove those so that you can remove your shifter. Now, this is an aftermarket short throw shifter. Um, so this might be a little bit different from yours, but it's pretty much going to be similar. Um, once you remove that, uh, there's going to be one more bolt that goes through the bottom of the shifter um, and that's what holds it in place um, so uh, once i get these guys out i'm going to jack up the vehicle and go underneath so we're underneath the vehicle and um, as you guys can see right there we have the shifter uh, the bottom of the shifter and the shifter bracket right there um, so there is a few fasteners holding on that bracket there is uh, two on each side and if memory serves correctly i believe they're 12 millimeters um, once you remove that and your shifter, um, this whole bracket and all that will basically come out. Uh, so it's very crammed right underneath here, but I'm going to go ahead and do that right now off camera and then show you guys these parts uh, out of the vehicle so you guys can see the difference. As you guys can see, I did finally get the stupid bracket out of the vehicle. Um, so on this bracket, you guys can see that there is some bushings on here. Uh, they're just plastic bushings and they can break over time. Um, so this system right here is just very complicated. Um, so we're gonna transition over to a more, uh, like I guess a simpler design that should uh, last quite a bit longer than this uh, system right here. Um, we're no longer gonna be using this bushing in the middle. So it's just gonna be uh, all solid construction here. Um, and it's just a lot simpler compared to this. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this uh, onto the vehicle. We have the hardware that goes with uh, with the bracket. So these bolts are gonna be uh, going here on the brackets and then you're gonna uh, go ahead and use a nut on the other side so that uh, the bracket can bolt up. Once you do that, you're gonna go ahead and put this shield uh, over top uh, along with your dust shield. Um, but we'll get to that in a second. First, let's go ahead and put this back together. This bracket looks like it's a little bit shorter than the stock one. Um, so we'll see if, uh, if that makes any difference. Uh, but regardless, uh, this is much better quality than the stock one, uh, which I don't doubt that this would ever fail, uh, but much better quality on this one for sure. All right guys, so as you guys can see, I did some work off camera. Uh, mainly what I did was put the black bracket on, I fastened it down, and then I also installed my short uh, throw shifter on there. Um, so I'm gonna do a little quick test here and uh, see how, how this feels compared to how it was. If I can find my shifter, my shift knob. So I'm just gonna put my shift knob back on here. Now if you guys remembered before, I would struggle a lot to get into the gears. Oh yeah, so that feels just a whole lot better right there. Very solid, but not difficult at all to get into the gears. So I am pretty happy with that right there. So uh, the last thing that I'm gonna do here is install the black cover uh, with dust boot that goes over the top of your shifter right here. Um, so there is four fasteners that holds this guy into place. Um, so it's pretty simple. To get this installed, just gotta find the little holes here, line it up. Kinda put this to the side here so it can go in there. There we go. So you just wanna go ahead and fasten down those four fasteners there um, and put this back together. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and take you for a quick drive. Still need to get a little used to the shifter. And I might need to adjust the, the uh, clutch pedal a little bit. You definitely hear a lot more vibrations with that bracket though. I don't know if you guys can pick it up in the video here, but the shift knob is vibrating.
I, I think it might be the shift uh, knob. It's probably worn out. I have another shift knob that I'm going to put on it, so hopefully that goes away. It's not terribly annoying, but it does make quite a bit of noise there. Now, as far as the car goes, it actually does drive and handle pretty good. The tires are a little bit big um, for the vehicle, so it kind of rubs in the back a little bit. And also, it's pretty damn low, so um, that doesn't help. definitely has some power for a 3.0 it's not bad I mean the school zone's got to take it easy here so it's a it's a new clutch so I should technically take it easy so that I can uh, properly you know wear in but it definitely feels a lot better with shifting uh, that bracket I don't know if it's the bracket or maybe it just needed a new bushing in the bracket, but whatever it was, I'm glad it's fixed now. Um, so I can, uh, first gear is a little hard, but it, from my experience, first gear is a little hard on all the Nissans that I've owned. Um, if you're not completely stopped, it's hard for you to get in first gear. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. There's a cop there. <laughs> I hope he was on a break. <laughs> that was a freaking cop. All right, but guys, I better go back home because I don't have the vehicle registered. But <laughs> I got a little scared there. <laughs> So final thoughts are, yes, this bracket has uh, helped a ton. Do you really need it? I don't know if you really need it, but it's a nice upgrade. Um, the shifter feels a lot firmer, but it does transfer a lot of noise inside the cabin. So that's, uh, that's kind of like a little negative there. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with, uh, with the bracket and the results that I've had. So this vehicle definitely still needs uh, quite a bit of work. It has uh, issues with the two O2 sensors, downstream O2 sensors. Um, it doesn't have them at all, so I actually need to put them in and drill into my exhaust. I also need to fix an issue with the idle air control valve. I don't know if it's that or maybe the O2 sensors not being there, messing up the the computer, thinking that it's you know idling rough when in fact it just needs those two. O2 sensors so um, there's definitely more work that needs to be done on this vehicle um, it it will probably need a timing belt and uh, water pump maybe I know it's a pain in the ass to do it on this vehicle so I'm kind of debating on whether I should do that uh, in the summer or wait for the winter just because it's so damn hot right now but I am glad that this is a 96 and it does come with the upgraded uh, AC system so uh, the AC does work in this vehicle and it's it's kind of cold, not too bad. So that's pretty much going to wrap up the video. I hope you guys did find it entertaining. If you guys did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing for more videos on the 300ZX. And I'll see you guys all in the next video. definitely takes off pretty good man I am stoked about that <laughs>